ओके सर गुड इवनिंग सर वेलकम टू आवर शो टॉक शो जय हिंद जय हिंद जय हिंद सर सो सर टुडे वी वांट टू नो फ्यू पॉइंट्स रिलेटेड टू द नेताजी एंड द आईएनए ऑब्वियसली uh so before going to that i mean how how this particular subject or this topic motivates you that we want to know at first before going ahead into that main topic uh okay uh let me put it this way that my interest in netaji developed when i was a child my uncle father's elder brother eldest brother was in the british indian army and he was the man who was posted on the afghanistan border when netaji crossed over and as kids he used to tell us that how four pathans got down from the car they looked at the car and they let the car go and then he will say how would we know that he was netaji and he would smile and then um, they were suspended and i used to ask him ke had you known netaji then what you would have done so he would smile but one thing would come clear from him which he never revealed that i think that the indians there at the post had already been uh, given something uh, you know hint and all that some indian leader is moving out or something and they shouldn't protest and he did that so that's how my interest had developed and listing certain other things how netaji was treated upon and all one used to feel very bad and will you believe that when i was a seventh class student there was a complaint made at my house that your son abuses nehru and gandhi so anyway but then i took up history but in history books you know there was not much on netaji and i so when i was doing my ba i think ba final i had completed i came across samar guha's book netaji dead or alive and i went through that book so in my teaching when i started teaching history at all i would definitely give a different kind of history to the students but i must say the real interest for researching netaji came when i was asked to make this museum in delhi okay so i had read netaji speeches earlier his correspondence earlier and all but when this task was assigned to me i read plenty on netaji i went through all his speeches all his correspondence all major books that were available on him collected photographs all these things in every aspect and that's the time i decided that there are so many aspects related to ayn and netaji which are not in public domain and i would like to bring them in public domain so that's how this first book of mine started uh i have to withdraw this book from publications reason and i'm with my old sir because the editorial board there and one joint secretary in the ministry of information and broadcasting okay they again wanted to suppress history not the dg but this editorial board they told me that i have put in false document in the in that book i laughed at them gave them all the documents but still they wanted me to edit it out certain passages particularly the passages where nehru is refusing to take the ian back into indian army uh how they are using their trials how they fool the people that after red fort trials everyone is free now of ian the trials are over and how after that also thousands were still imprisoned and were not released and the letters which i quoted of uh, nehru begging mount bed until 2nd of august to release the uh, ina people and all those things so i said i won't do that because this is how you people have suppressed this history 
I'm not going to do that. So better you return my manuscript. And I made it a point that it should come out on 23rd January. So in a hurry, there were certain mistakes also, which went into it, you know, um, typological error kinds of things, which I have revised now, and it's coming back out again. Uh, the revised one things were there. So that, and the more I read on Netaji, the more angry I became. Okay, sir. The uh, more determined I uh, Yes, sir, your book, uh, Netaji, Ajadhin Sarkar and Forge, uh, Removing Smoke Screens, yes. 1942 to 47. So we'll uh, yeah. come to that book uh, and we'll, uh, I mean, uh, listen all the journey and the, all the obstructions and the challenges because I have, uh, I'm following you from last couple of years. I have seen your tweets, your YouTube videos that uh, you have faced lots of challenges to reach there. I mean, the INA, uh, I mean, the families, their family members, their grandsons to find it out and to, uh, I mean, take them to Delhi and take all the details. So it was very difficult to work. So we'll uh, come to that part as well. So uh, before that, we just want to know that uh, how these things come, I mean, how these things grew up in the history when uh, Netaji left the country in 1941. So uh, what might be the reason that, uh, what kind of obstruction from the obligations he, is having, he was having over there? And after that, uh, leaving the country and going to the, I mean, ex exact the opposite part of the, of the world and making an army and coming back and dreaming to make free India, how difficult it was. And we are now 20, I mean, we are now 2022. And even now people can't think about it. And that point of time, that man had done, I mean, had done it. See, that's why I was telling you that later you should be studied as a leadership model, you know. You study Bill Gates, you study John F. Kennedy, you study Nehru and all. But what Netaji did in six months time, I don't think there has any parallel in world history in terms of any of the aspects. I'll come to those aspects one by one. Uh, I'll start by one thing. You see that creation of INA was not something new. Don't forget, a similar method was done in 1857 okay. when the people revolted that those Indians who were in the service of the British East India Company, they started, the, the revolt started with them, though it was planned for the last five years. People don't believe it. They think it was spontaneous. No, it was not spontaneous. I proved in my other museum that it was planned for the last five years. So it was not something new. And the second opportunity of that came after the formation of the Gadar Party had brought. And the Gadar party tried an armed revolution in the country. Remember that Raj Bihari was moved in the cantonments in Punjab, trying to mobilize the soldiers over there. And the scheme went out and it came to be known as the Lahore conspiracy case, when many were hanged and many were sent uh, into Andamans and other places and sentenced and all those things. But even then, the first action took place in September 2015 in Singapore where one full regiment of the British Indian Army, they revolted and they took Singapore. And for four days, Singapore was in their control. So, and 56 of them were shot dead then by the Britishers in a row over there. I put that photograph in my book also over there. So this was not something new. And the Gadar Party people had spread all over the world, particularly Southeast Asian countries, and let me make a point here very clearly. You know who was their godfather in Southeast Asia and India? Don't believe it. Their godfather was Rabindranath Tagore. Don't forget, Raj Bihari went to Japan on a passport. Yes, yes. Mentioning himself as PA of Rabindranath Tagore. Don't forget that all those countries which Rabindranath Tagore visited, the Indian Independence League came up in those countries. When he went to Japan, he met Raj Bihari uh, Bose. He met An uh, Anand Mohan Sahai. He met Raja Mahindra Pratap Singh. And the CID report of 2000, uh, sorry, 1918, 
uh, of Americans when they decoded the uh, Gadar Party codes, they had put up a report saying that this poet Tagore is very dangerous. So that uh, Tagore had two personalities. One is Tagore, the other is the revolutionaries. And don't also forget that people sent the spies on ships by Netaji. They all would go to Shantini Netaji. And many of the revolutionaries of Anshulian and Jugantar came from Shantini Ketan. And they moved to, even up to Manipur, when the INA came over there. And so this was not a new idea. Netaji, always from day one, was not satisfied with Gandhian methods. There's a very interesting CID report of 1929 from Lahore. I must salute this inspector who could make this kind of a, you know, a prediction about Bose. He says, he is the man to be watched. He can go for armed assistance from foreign countries to liberate India. And he's saying this in 1929. Now, don't forget that in 1939, recently this has come out, Netaji had formed that M9 group of revolutionaries, which had contacts in Thailand, which had contacts in uh, Japan, Germany, other places. And this CIA report lists the names of everyone with whom Netaji was in contact from India in 1939, and when he went to Kabul, from Kabul over there. Secondly, the formation of INA. We say that Mohan Singh formed the INA. No, Mohan Singh was the journal of INA, first made commander-in-chief of INA. The very idea of INA came from these Gadar revolutionaries, Rajbihari Bose, Pritam Singh, Amar Singh. Of course, supported by Fujiwara. And the first meeting to form the INA takes place in Thailand, in a small Chinese tea shop, you know, where it is decided. And from there, Pritam Singh, Satyanand Puri, Amar Singh, they go to Singapore with Fujiwara and they talk to Fujiwara. And then how that's finally is formed. Another please keep thing in mind that Netaji was not going to Germany. Netaji's plan was to go to Russia. Yeah the help there, and then from the side of Afghanistan, attack the British in India. That was the original plan of Netaji. And when in Kabul, when USSR chickened out, then it came that he should go to Germany. We are in Kutrodi, the Italian ambassador in um, of, uh, Kabul helped a lot. And the whole thing was made. Now, here one more thing is very crucial. That when the British had come to know that he was in Kabul, they were also lying low. They were not declaring it out that where he is. And we have the documents now with us. I put it in the museum also. Two documents. When MI5 agents in Egypt Cairo and Istanbul in Turkey were instructed to get Netaji if he takes the route of any of these two countries to Berlin. See the fear of the British. No Indian political leader, they had this kind of a thing that you assassinate him. And these attempts continued. There were two attempts on him in Rangoon also when he was in Rangoon later on. Now he reaches Germany, of course goes via Russia, so these people can't do anything, and Russia under compulsion in the pressure of Germany had to give him that transit visa of going through that. And then we know the story that Indian Legion comes up, how he, you know, for a long time he was in Germany also, he was putting, putting up as Mozart, you know, mentioning himself to people. And then 
well, the Indian uh, Legion is formed, converted into INA there. INA is formed there. That kind of a thing. And then later he decides to go to uh, Japan. He is going to Japan. He is also pre-planned. It is not a kind of thing that uh, it is uh, suddenly decided to go to Japan. No. His absence was being felt. Because first INA had failed there because of certain reasons. They wanted some leadership for it. Initially, the name of Raja Mahindra Pratap was coming up. We have the evidences now. But Mahindra Pratap sort of shot his mouth. That on Japanese radio, he spoke something that we are going to make an army and this and that and, uh, you know, do for that. Uh, he talked to the Japanese radio. He got picked up by the British and all. And the Japanese got very, you know, jittery about it. This man is not secretive. So that time only, both Rajbihari Bosch and Naram Sahai, Arad Bon Sahai, they wanted uh, Bosch to come and lead. Because 1939 and all, even in the country, what most position had become was there. And this association was there because if you read K.M. Munshi, Munshi's book, and we now know that why uh, this Tripuri was done to Netaji, that he had to resign. When uh, Munshi boasts of this, that uh, knowing my relationship with Gandhi and Patel, uh, the Viceroy sent me an intelligence file, uh, which said that he's trying to hobnob with Germans and Japanese and all. And this file was to be shown to Gandhi. And I showed that file to Gandhi, and then the file was safely returned to the Viceroy. This is what K. Munshi has written. Even Raj won. Gandhi had no in his book over there. This writing of the wall was always there. But uh, uh, no one bothered, actually, uh, to look into these kind of uh, things and link the things together. That's what I've tried to link the things, you know, uh, keeping in front of me all these aspects related to that. So, then when the first INA failed, and again the problems were there, there was this strong thing that Netaji should be called to Japan to lead it. And here also, Netaji was slightly, I would say, dejected, because he didn't want Germany to attack Russia. He told the Germans point blank on that part. And if you'll recall, I have no evidences with me that all people of the Indian Legion in Germany, the INA in Germany, were left with these instructions that you have to fight on the Western Front only, not on the Eastern Front. Meaning that they don't have to fight the Russians. They have to fight only the British or Americans or French on the Western Front. And even if Hitler puts them on the Eastern Front, they should refuse to fight. Very clearly, this autonomy was maintained. And uh, they were not put on to the Eastern Front. And that is why, in '45, we have now that CDISC reports and all interrogation reports where it comes out, that the soldiers are saying that written instructions were received uh, from Netaji. In July itself, '45, that the Indian Legion, the Indian National Army in Europe should move to Russia. And they say that many of them, uh, our officers, had already gone to Russia in this regard. These evidences are very clear now. Russia may deny, but these are very clear evidences. Over there. So in such circumstances, he goes to uh, Japan. Twice his journey is cancelled because Earlier it was thought that he'll go by air, but uh, uh, because of the threats and all, he never went by air. And submarine went. And not only his submarine went, there are many submarines which followed successfully. Because we know that Swami went for the intelligence man. Um, Ayer went after that. Some doctors went, Ram Chandra Rao and others went over there. So it was a constant ongoing to uh, strengthen the INA. And now when Netaji goes to Southeast Asia, this kind of appeal which he makes, and what he does there, is marvelous. See, there's no parallel in the world. 
of the diaspora coming out and fighting for its country's liberation like this, the way the Indian diaspora in Southeast Asia did, from a hawker to a millionaire. They were youngsters who had never seen India. We had only heard stories about India from their grandfathers. Look at Yanki Tevar. How old was she? 16, 17 years old. We have quoted, actually, Priya Darshi Mukherjee also had quoted uh, many of these instances in, in his book, which I repeated in my book, actually, because I thought that, that was go to the public again. That 16-year-old girl, after listening to Nathaji, also died in the Rani Jazi Regiment. And the family opposes and locks her up in the room on first floor. And at night, at 1 o'clock, she jumps. And at 1.30, she's outside the Rani Jazi camp, shouting at the gate that I am here to join, open the gates. And this is not one instance. There are many such instances. And the other thing you see in him is that this mobilization which took place there was irrespective of region, caste, region and caste and religion. 50% Radis were from Tamil Nadu. The Tamil Kuris over there in Malaya. There were six. There were Kuris. I found some Jains were also there. Christians were also there. Muslims were also there. And all these things were suppressed. That how a full-fledged training camp was there in Shanghai. 2006 came from Shanghai to Burma. And total mobilization call was given. After the first a retreat from uh, Imphal. 2006 came out of which there were about 150 women in that who joined the Rani Jazi regiment. So all these aspects, and you see, see the other crucial part. While mobilizing, if you look at his speeches in Singapore, he is clearly saying that we should take money or help from the others when we don't have. And when we Indians have this much money in this region, why do we take money from other countries? He paid every pie which he had taken from Germany um, or Japan. Through Bank of, of uh, Japan, uh, he was returning the money to Germany, which uh, Germany had sent with him when he came to uh, Southeast Asia. He was uh, returning that money altogether. And then you look at the way he reorganized the INA. Which branch of the army, the modern army, was not there which the INA had? Even certain steps further. It was quite revealing to me when I saw that within the medical corps of INA, Dr. Kastliwal at that time, Colonel Kastliwal, had made a trauma unit in those days in 43 to handle the trauma of the soldiers in war, uh, uh, which is something you see uh, very commendable for that period, uh, thinking on those lines. And how the nurses were trained, how the doctors were recruited in the INA, because he had plans, he was not just leading an army to go and fight and commit suicide over there. Though he kept telling the soldiers who got recruited uh, that what I have to give you in return is only hunger and death. I'm asking for your blood. And I have to give you that only. But that's how he motivated for the sake of it. And then you see the amount of money which is coming. There are instances, uh, I think Nair or uh, Chatterjee, yes, Chatterjee puts in his book, that there was this hawker who came with $100 and he wanted to deposit uh, $200. And Nair advised him, you know, you deposit $100 and the rest you keep with you because you'll need something to eat and all that. So this man agrees, he deposits $100 and 
and goes back. And Nair says, after half an hour, I see him again standing in the queue. So I ask him, okay, why have you come to see Netaji again? He said, no, I have to come. I have come back again to give this hundred dollars. Because when I decided once that I have to give two hundred dollars, if I take these hundred dollars back, I won't be at peace with myself. This is the kind of thing which Netaji went away. If you look at Yusuf Mafrani, Netaji used to call it Habib. Uh, Habib Farmula, who gave one crore rupees at that time, the keys of his cars, his houses, his wife's jewelry. Or you look at even the shepherds, gualas, who went with cows and buffaloes. If you have nothing else, they will be there. We will march with the army, providing them milk. Show me. This kind of immobilization or this kind of a sacrifice at all by anyone uh, during that period. So uh, th that is what was happening. And compare that with the Indian situation. I'll give you the instance of. Uh, Chitiyar Temple in Singapore. Nitaji asked them for donations and they said, yes, we will give, but we'd like you to come and deliver a lecture in our temple. And Nitaji came to know that in this temple there is strict certain castes. So what he said, he said, I'll come to your temple, but I'll come with all my officers. And the temple agreed. So in his officers with him uh, went a Christian also, went Muslims also, went Sikhs also. And they were provided all the tilak in the temple over there. These are practical incidents. There was a fight in a unit, some, uh, some differences over food. Tamil food or Punjabi food or something. The moment he hears that, he visits that unit and he tells them, if you're going to have this difference in food over there, I'll better dismantle this regiment, rather take them to fight in the war. And next day he's informed, you know, everything is okay. There's a case which I came across where someone was to be court-martialed in the INA, and they were, the person was in north, from the north, and there were two judges on the court-martial who were from south. And someone goes to Netaji to plead, says, you have done this 2,000 Indian judges, so the judgment will go against him in the North Indian. So please change the judges and all. He calmly listens to it. And the person goes away. He changes the third judge also. And instead of the North Indian judge, he puts up another South Indian judge over there. This was the person who will believe in these things. How many people, people in India have the guts to say that we don't want our women to do sati? We want our women to heal the soul of Rani Jasi and fight. A women to carry the first modern women army in the world. He does it. A child army in the world. Varak Sera. And you know the role which this Balak Sela performed after 45. Forget for only moment 45. When Singapore was taken over by Mount Batten, the slogan of Jain was banned, was to be punished. And what these kids will do? They will come out from one street, shout at the British <laughs> army posted over there. Jain, Jain, and they run after them and they go inside the street to another house. And the entire slogan of, the uh, entire ban on this slogan of Jain became redundant over there. These kids will taunt at the Indian soldiers of the British Indian Army who went there after occupation in 45. You should be ashamed that INA was fighting for their pure freedom. 
and you people are here doing the slavery of the British, which had its impact on India, on the Indian army. We have evidences now that the ships which went to bring these people from Pearl Harbor, uh, Pearl Jail in uh, Singapore, those officers of uh, the Indian officers in the British Indian Army, they told the Indian people, you have done your job, now it is our turn. Uh, and what is... Sir, uh, sorry, sir, I'm interrupting.